and welcome back to the Men's Journal Everyday Warrior Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Sorelli. Uh, we're joined here by the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, General Manager, uh, Mike Ganzi. Uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we had uh, Coach JB on uh, earlier uh, to talk about his perspective of leadership uh, with the, uh, the players. Uh, one of the most intriguing uh, you know, relationships is between a general manager of a sports team and the head coach. Um, I mean, uh, we, we just talked about this prior to the, uh, the, the podcast that the last dance really sort of threw that, that dynamic into, uh, into the limelight about how critical that role is and how it can either lift teams up or, or, or sink teams uh, as well, because the players, the players see it. Um, even if you put best face on <laughs> in, a, in a very uh, toxic relationship, the players uh, sense that as well as the, uh, the public. Um, talk a little about how you see the, the, the role of the general manager. I know the basic description is you oversee all the player selection and contracts, and then ultimately you do have the tough decision of, yeah. <laughs> of if – You've got to let the head coach yep. go. That's that's ultimately yeah. your decision. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a little bit of both. You know, obviously, the, the big thing is dealing with the head coach and working with the head coach day to day about our roster in general. You know, whether it's picking players, trading players, signing players, and then making tough decisions where, you know, some guys that expected to play or think they're going to play aren't playing. So, you know, myself, JB, he's tremendous to work with. I mean, you know, the trust and communication we have together is key. I think that's really, really important for the relationship. And the way we have it is, is, is high level. And I can talk to him about anything. He can come to me about anything. And, you know, the number one thing is about our players, you know, trying to get them better and trying to get us to win games. And, and he's been great to work with. You know, it, it also highlights, you said, a tough decision. That, I think that's an understatement because you build serious relationships with these guys and then – you know, tough, again, an understatement of that's excruciating to have to let yeah. someone you built a relationship with maybe four years, mm -hmm. you trade them to another team or you got to let them go. Yeah, no, I mean, it's tough. I mean, especially now in the NBA, you're getting these guys at 18, 19 years old, you know, especially where we've been the last couple of years drafting high in the draft. And, you know, you build a relationship over three, four years. And I think nowadays these kids, you know, they grow obviously as, as they're in the league more, but like they know it's a business at the end of the day. So like, you know, the time that they're here, we try to, you know, obviously first class, treat them as, as the best we can, get them better. You know, I mean, the Cavs, we, we were first class in every kind of resource to yeah. these players. So they understand it's a business, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's not easy because you build a relationship with these guys, you know, their families, their wives, their kids, and it's never easy. Like that, those are the hardest days, you know, of, of the job. You say 18 year olds, um, yeah, you're, you're not, you're not their father, nor, nor is coach JB. Um, but you know, I think back to when I was 18 and, uh, the only word that comes to mind is jackass. Um, uh, now if, if I, you know, I had such a skill as they to fall into, to, to money at the age of 18, I mean, there, there's gotta be some degree of you're also helping them, yep. uh, uh, hashtag adult yeah. adulting. Um, where, where, where does that relationship come yeah, in no. making sure that they make wise decisions, yeah. not only with their money, but life. Yeah. No, I think like, you know, for one, like whether you're trading, drafting, like yeah. you're taking a chance on them and you see something in them, not only as a player, as a person. So they respect that. And, you know, at least from my relationship, you know, like obviously it's business on the court, but yeah. you know, off the yeah. court, you know, how's your family? How's it going? You know, you try to have a mentorship with them and, you know, they, they want to talk to me. My door's wide open. Like they're struggling on the court and maybe, maybe they can't reach out to coach or they can't figure out why coach is not playing them or the role on the team. He's always welcome to come to me and talk to me and, you know, obviously me and coach are going to be on the same page, but if he, if they want another outlet or another, you know, voice that's not the coaches, I'm always here to talk to them. And, you know, obviously I'm going to do what's best for the organization, yeah. and obviously from the coach, but, you know, if they want to vent or just hear someone else, I'm always here. And, you know, that's happened a couple of times, you know, throughout my career here. And I think it helps because it just, it just makes them feel more comfortable, not only with the front office, but also the coaching staff and, you know, we want them to be as comfortable as they can with us. That's great. You, you know, you talk about the organization, ultimately, the city of Cleveland come first over any one player. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone is cut out to, to, to be a leader because of the decisions that, that leaders have to make uh, of letting uh, uh, people go. Um, and I know a lot of leaders, there's, there's, there's people that are listening that struggle with that, that daily, so I don't, I don't envy you in yeah. your position. Firing people is the, the worst yeah. thing uh, that anyone can do. Um, Let's let's talk about that relationship with JB a little more because I I'd love to know uh, you guys are not nobody sees eye to eye on everything 
What do those discussions uh, sort of, how do those go? I mean, is there passion behind the yeah. closed doors? Oh, yeah. I mean, like we're talking about, you know, whether it's the draft, a trade, a signing for, for anything. Like, you know, he's going to like someone, I'm going to like someone, and, you know, we're going to hash it out. And, you know, there's some heated conversations, which are good. But at the end of the day, when we leave that room or that, that you know, that, that door, we close that door, like, you know, it's, hey, this is the decision we're going to make, whether, you know, he's right or I'm right, or it's my guy or his guy, like we're going to go forward and it, it's a group decision. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we talked about it and, you know, we'll go through it in depth, you know, talk about our roster, talk about why, you know, X, Y, Z, the pot, you know, the, the pros, the cons. And, you know, that's the thing with JB, like I can come to him with anything. He knows he can come to me with anything. If, if he's mad at something I'm doing, you know, or upset with something I'm doing, I know he can come to me and tell me and I can do the same to him. And, and we'll, and, you know, we'll, We'll disagree, but then we'll agree at the end. And, you know, ultimately we want what's best for our players and best for the Cavaliers, and, and that's what that's that's the only thing on our mind. It, it sounds a little like a marriage almost, an yeah, arranged marriage. Exactly, yeah, yeah, there's give and take. Because um, to your point, like, I see JB more than I probably see my kids and my <laughs> wife. So, yeah. you know, like, we are kind of married somewhat. You know, you know, when you think about that, for anyone, regardless of, of whatever industry you're in, if you actually count the amount of hours you spend with your colleagues – it's much more than yeah. with your family because that's five days a week yep. compared to the two, two yeah. days or maybe fourteen days of yep. vacation you get to uh, to take a year. That's that's pretty insane. It's it's almost as if it is your first family yeah, in exactly. terms of hours. Um, so, you know, we often talk about there is a difference between agreement and alignment. Uh, but when you guys disagree and let's say you you, you say, hey, JB, we're going to go with with your choice on this. Once you step out of that room, you guys are totally aligned regardless of the outcomes on that decision. Yeah, yeah, and. You know, that's the thing, like, I mean, he's so easy to deal with. We're like, hey, I got, I want this guy for, you know, training camp because we got camp coming up and, hey, we need a point guard. So who do you like, you know, and he likes his top guy. Okay, we'll bring him in. So, you know, like there's some give and take with stuff. Obviously, um, you know, I'm going to have probably the ultimate decision myself and Kobe Altman, but, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, JB's in the mix. I mean, he's, us three are connected at the hip and no matter what it is, like, you know, he might not agree with something, but he's going to be fine, move forward and, he likes a guy that maybe I don't necessarily like, and he really, really likes him. He's passionate about then, it. Then, you know, yeah. hey, he, he's the one coaching him. So, yeah. and he, he might have a previous relationship with some of these guys, and I, I have all the trust in him. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, you just got to, you got to move, you got to move beyond your ego and everything. And yeah. obviously with JB, like, you know, he's the one coaching the team, and he's been, he's been around the league longer than I have him as a coach. You know, I've, I've never been an NBA coach like him. So, I'm going to, I'm going to lean on him a lot for a lot of things. So, um, you talked about selection of players. I'm always interested. I mean, there is – talent is talent. Mm -hmm. If somebody's throwing up an average of, you know, 20 to 30 points, uh, you know, per game, uh, it's it's undeniable that, that they're talented. Mm -hmm. But to what degree do you guys look past that for character and then also sort of culture fit? And when I say culture fit, not likability. Yep. I'm talking about they're a team player. They know how to put their needs aside for the, 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 the better of the organization. Yeah. How does that come into play for you guys? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, like you said, the talent's number one, but, I mean, we do so much background and thorough evaluation on these kids, and whether it's college, you know, whether it's a trade, draft, signing, anything. And, you know, like the thing, the thing that we stress is, like, we want high-character guys, you know, which is cliche, but we want guys that, you know, that are going to fight through adversity, they're going to work hard every day. You know, we got guys that live in the gym, you know, that want to get better, that want to yeah. be around each other, and guys that just – aren't full of themselves, you know, like we want guys that are going to be about the team. They don't care if they're getting the points or, you know, they're not getting that big contract. They want what's, what's best for the team. And, and I think like with JB, with the culture that yeah. we have, yeah. you know, winning helps obviously, but like daily good habits, you know, like trying to win that 1% every day, you know, you're not going to have a great day every day, like all of us do, but, you know, try to have more good days than bad in the week. And, you know, if you come in ready to go, you do your work, you know, you eat right, you, you do your rehab, you do your weights, you do your basketball stuff. We're going to give you every resource you have. Anything you need, if you're a Cleveland Cavaliers basketball player, you're going to have at your disposal. You just got to ask. And we have all the best coaches in the world. We got the best front office. We got the best ownership. It's just, you know, like we're a small market, but, you know, we have everything in this building, you know, to, to have success in this league. To, to what degree do you feel like you're a representative of the city of Cleveland? <laughs> a lot you know I mean this is you know like a dream job for me really you know being being from Cleveland and you know, being a part of the championship yes. yeah, in 2006 or 2016 and then now just basically coming from an intern working my way up to where I am now like I've had a lot of great people help me along the way and had a lot of breaks and good luck but you know I've I've tried to just put my head down and 
just be a star in your role. You know, like I don't know anything about analytics. I don't know anything about coaching, but I feel like that's I, why I, I, I feel like I'm good at evaluation and, yeah. and people skills and, you know, can get along with people and obviously evaluate good talent to bring in the building. So, you know, I just stay in my lane and do what I can do. And um, I'm here. So I'm, I'm pinching myself and I love what I'm doing. Wait, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Sell me on the city of Cleveland. Cleveland. What, what do people not know about Cleveland? How would you describe this, uh, I mean, this city? You're here in the fall. You know, obviously winters, oh, winters, right winters, winters could be hit yeah. or miss, but I'm a Christmas baby, so I love the snow. I'd rather have it cold, snowy, six inches of snow every day if I could. I don't know. That's, that's so you crazy. play basketball. You would open the stadium yeah. ceiling if you oh, could. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd be out in like three inches, of, you know, three feet of snow just shooting hoops, and I didn't even, I didn't even plow the driveway, you know, but um, – but in Cleveland, it's, you know, it's hard-nosed, blue collar. I mean, the people are passionate yeah. about their sports. I mean, the Guardians, the Browns, the Cavs. I mean, that's what everyone loves. Like, even if you're not, like, really a sports fan, you're still going to watch. You're still going to go to games. Like, they're passionate about sports, and they're great people. Like, obviously, I grew up here, and I have four kids. But, like, it's an unbelievable place to raise a family. You know, the falls, the summers, the springs are beautiful here. And, you know, people are just passionate about their sports. Like, if you're an athlete here, you're going to be a rock star, you know? Like, it's not maybe like some other cities where, you know, you're struggling, you're not playing well, they're going to be all over you. You know, obviously you're going to – you want to live up to your standards, but they're going to they're gonna pat you on the back and encourage you and love you, and that's just kind of the way the city is. For a kid coming from the Bay Area, <laughs> there is something about Cleveland where you feel that, uh, man, it is a, a good representation of that underdog – uh, mentality. It, it is very much a good representative uh, of the United States of America. Um, so you guys are, I mean, one, you came off a season where people mm-hmm. predicted only 25 wins. You guys walked away with 44. You have, you, you and JB have now set this, this underdog junkyard uh, dog mentality culture. Yeah. Uh, how excited are you for the season coming up? I'm very excited. You know, it's, you know, with, with all the pandemic stuff, this off season was a lot longer than, than normal. So like, you're kind of itching to get going and you know obviously with with the trade we made last week for Donovan Mitchell and the year we had and you know I think the guys are they're hungry because we were so close to getting in the playoffs and yes we just had a, a barrage of injuries that kind of hurt us at the end but you know we're, we're excited to have the X on our back like we we want the expectations we want the pressure and I think we're really excited for this year and our young guys are ready to keep growing and and we got solid vets. I mean, Kevin Love, what he did last year was incredible. Yeah, Bringing yes. Ricky Rubio back yep. and then add in some other vets. Like, we're just excited because I know the coaches are excited and, and obviously the front office and the players. And the, I know the city of Cleveland is really excited about what's to come too. Talk to me, uh, last question, about this junkyard dog mentality and how it just is applicable to anyone regardless of what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, what, why do you love this, this, this sort of yeah. mantra that you guys have adopted? You know, I mean, obviously the regular season, 82 games. So, you know, I mean, it's a lot of games. I mean, I don't have to go through it, but these players have to do that every single day, you know, lace their shoes up and get ready. But, you know, with us being Cleveland and, like I said, with the city and, you know, being the blue collar, hard nose, like, you know, being the most selfless team and the hardest working team. You know, we got we to gotta outwork guys, you know. Now, obviously we're getting talent, you know, where previous years, you know, we, we struggled and we are building through the draft. But – now we have the talent plus, I think, the mentality of that junkyard dog to just come in and, you know, teams are going to lay down come th- third, fourth quarter. We're in the best shape of our lives. We're the best shape you know, of, of any team in the NBA. And, and we just have that mental toughness and that grit and that, and that, that passion, physicality. You know, we're going to defend because I know, we, you know, playing for Coach JB, if you don't defend, you're not going to play. So I think a combination of all those and then seeing the success last year, with the way, you know, coach wanted us to play and the way we had to play, you know, I think guys know, hey, I better, you know, step it up even more this year to be able to hopefully get to where we want to go. It, it, actually, I'm going to ask one more. Lamar Stevens. Yeah. So I know he, yeah. he helped set this again, this, this mantra of the junkyard dog. Um, how does he embody uh, that? I mean, he, he's like, you would think he's from Cleveland, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, like, obviously played at Penn State, you know, a yes. football school, yes. but – he turned it into a basketball school while he was there. And I mean, he just, you know, he's not afraid. That's one thing about him. Like he is not afraid of anyone. He'll, he'll go up against LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, you know, Kevin Durant, like, and he don't care. And he did that as a rookie. So, you know, he just came in with this, just this chip on his shoulder. You know, I mean, obviously he's tough, he's gritty, he's physical. I mean, you know, he's big and strong and he just embodies our team. I mean, and the thing about him that I respect the most is like, you know, some nights, 
he might not be in the rotation, but whenever he's called upon, he's ready to go. He's ready to play. And, you know, he's turned himself into a really good NBA rotational player. Did, did you know he was an author of the children's yes, book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he, he's a bit, you know, he, um, you know, when I was in Florida this, this summer at vacation, I went to go see him because he's working at Florida Gulf Coast. Yes. And, you know, he just, he spent like 15, 20 minutes with my kids just hanging out. And that, that's just who he is. Not, you know, he's a monster on the court and he's trying to go at your neck, but off the floor, you know, he's just an unbelievable person and a he really cares, cares, cares about kids, yeah. you know, and whoever's going to, you know, whoever's going to marry him and whoever's going to have kids, they're going to be really lucky to have him as a father and a, and a husband. Damn right. Well, Mike, uh, best of luck on the season. Uh, I think, you know, people listen to this and they're going to connect uh, regardless if they're from Cleveland or not. And uh, I will always choose a team of character over a team of talent who can operate as a team because we either, we either win as a team or we lose as individuals. So, uh, again, congratulations to the culture you guys have built in the turnaround over the past few seasons, man. Uh, it, it is not going un unnoticed. <laughs> no, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Uh, again, thank you for joining the Men's Journal Everyday Warrior. I'm your host, Mike Sorelli. And until next time, we'll see you.